In today's tutorial, we will look at another topic specific to Node.js at a request from one of the patrons of this channel. With Node, you may need to receive commands and options when code is invoked. So we're going to look at how you can do that using the YARGS module. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. This tutorial is probably coming out a day late. My wife had shoulder surgery and I've been helping her. Now, when using Node, it can be beneficial to be able to invoke some code, but at the same time, pass in commands and options in order to control how that code should run. Let me show you a simple example of some code and what we may want to do with it in this regard. All right, I've got two functions. Now I've called this module greet. So greet.js is the file that it's in and these two functions simply do a greet. So I'm trying to keep this code as simple as possible. One, uh, a simple greet does a hi and then if the name exists, it does that. And the other does a, for a more formal greeting. And we're going to declare a name variable here at the top. So now that's the code. Now, if I open up the console and run this, what's going to happen? Well, let's look at it. I'm going to go ahead and type node greet to invoke that file. And it runs, but nothing shows up. Simply because these functions are declared, this variable is declared, but nothing else is invoked. None of the functions are invoked. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could control that from here on the console? If I could do something like node greet and then simple and then pass in a name like this. And then that would run the simple greeting or the formal greeting, whichever one I entered here. And it would also assign Stephen to the name variable. Right now I can go ahead and enter that command. Nothing happens, of course, because it's still the same file. So right now what we have to do, if we want to make that sort of thing happen, is I have to add some more code. Enter Steven in there as the name. And then down here, I can invoke either formal or simple. Let's go ahead and invoke simple. Now when I run node greet, now we get back something on the console. Hi, Steven. But it would be better if we could simply control it this way. And that's what we're going to do. That's what the YARGS module, Y-A-R-G-S, the YARGS module, that's what it allows us to do. So in order to use that, the first thing I want to do is install Yargs. And so we've looked at installing modules in other tutorials related to Node.js. And if you haven't viewed those other tutorials and you're new to Node.js, I'll include a link in the description section. I have a playlist on Node. So in order to install this module, we simply enter npm install Yargs. That will do it to us. Now there could be other flags we may want to enter. For example, we could enter a dash G if we wanted to install this globally. Right now, this is going to be installed here. We could also enter dash dash save if we had a package.json file and we needed to write this as a dependency. Now, package.json is something we haven't talked about yet in the playlist, but that would be something we want to do if we had a, a package.json. So here I've got the command to install yargs. I go ahead and press enter and I get that installed. Now we're ready to use yargs to grab this type of information from the command line and then use it in a way that can benefit 
controlling our module. So let me start by deleting these bits of code which I put in here. And now we are going to require the args module. And I'm going to use argv as the variable. I'm going to set that equal to require. So here we are requiring the args module. And then inside of quotes, yargs. Now, if you look at the API for yargs, there is a property dot argv that returns information about what is entered on the command line. And so that's going to be very helpful to us. And so I'm simply going to use that property as a part of this code that I'm entering. And so that's what I'm going to do. Require yargs and then the dot argv property. Now, in order to see what that returns, let me do a console log here of argv. So we can take a look at it. Let me save that. We'll go back out here to the terminal. I'm going to clear it really quick. And then I'm going to go back to the command I used right here. Node greet simple dash dash name and then Steven. I'm going to press return. And look what we get. Look at the object we are able to retrieve with this property this property of the args module. We have an array. This is an object, as you can see with the curly braces. And in the object, we have an array. The name is the underscore. And that array keeps track of any commands that are entered. And so notice we're showing simple here. We also have name. This is the option that we included and it added it in this object and then gave us the value of that option. And then we can see that it also indicates the JavaScript file or module. So this would allow us to grab the information that we needed. Let's just look really quick at how we do that. I'm going to add a few more console log statements. So log arg v dot underscore this would access that underscore array and then the very first element of that array is the command and so this will allow us to display the command and then also we could do argv dot name and that would allow us to display the name option that was included all right, let's take a look at that. Press return again. Here we go. We have the command, and then we have the value of the name option that was entered. And so that's giving us exactly what we want. We can now use this information to create a more user-friendly file here. So let me go ahead and comment out these console log statements. And then I'm going to now set this variable to argv.name. So now we have the name variable with something in it. If something's been included with that name option. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a new variable command. I'm going to set that equal to argv. And then the array, the underscore array. And index zero is what I want to grab there. And that will give me the command. So now I have these two variables I can use to work with. Now this one, our functions are already checking to see if the name variable has something in it. If so, it does the more spelled out version of the greeting using a template string. And by the way, if you're unfamiliar with template strings, I'll link to a tutorial on that. So it already checks for the name. Now we need to just add some code that's going to check for the command and then invoke the right function depending on which command is entered. Now in this case, we only have two. We only have two functions in here. But what if we had a file that had multiple functions in it? In that case, it'd be nice to use a switch command. 
because we could then have one switch command to control what functions were called based upon the command which is entered at the command line. Now, once again, if you're unfamiliar with the switch command, I'll link to that as well in the description. So let me come down here and we're going to enter switch and then in parentheses what we want to test. And we want to test command. Then we have our curly braces. This is the body of the switch command. And then we just enter a case for each possible case that the command could be. So let's do simple first. Colon, then down here, we simply invoke the simple function and then we break. So that's the first case. The second case would be formal. And if formal is entered, we invoke formal and then we break, just like that. Finally, at the end, I think it's nice to put a default. And then with the default, I'm just going to do a console log and indicate, please enter a command. Now, we could provide a lot more help. It's possible to do that. We could provide a whole lot more help with this, but we're going to leave it simple like that for now. And then... I would do a break there. So I think we have things set up so we can now control things from the command line. So let me go ahead and save that and let's try it out. We'll come back out here to the terminal and I'm gonna go up to that most recent command. I'm gonna press return and we get a simple hi with the name Steven. All right, let's change it a bit. Node greet formal. And let's leave the name off this time. Let's see what we get. Hello and welcome. So we get the formal greeting without the name. We could then, of course, add the name. Let's do James this time. Now we get hello, James, and welcome. All right, so this is a simple example of how to grab that user input, how to grab commands and options from the command line in Node. It's a simple example, but I think from this, you can extrapolate and see how this could be used in other settings. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. For example, you can get access to the code files I use as a member level. You can follow a link in the description to learn more about that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.